you know, when you look at conflict zones, in all conflict zones, you see that the more militarized our spaces and our places, the more violence, the violence against women increases. Uh, when there is poverty, actually, and when there is uh, not uh, a very high rate of unemployment, when there is uh, uh, political instability, uh, and there are many uh, checkpoints, closures, all the situation is a situation in which uh, raises the tension inside the family. And this constant anxiety and uncertainty, and living in constant uncertainty, changes the entire life, especially of women. Because uh, the segregation war, or because of the checkpoints, because of the bad economical situation, the instability, it also affects a lot um, the, the chances to be given for women as well, uh, for, for men to, to, to have a life as any other country in the world, people in the world. Domestic violence increases, patriarchal and masculine violence increases, economic violence against women increases, health conditions, and this is another kind of violence, uh, uh, increases the issue of education when you are really affecting women's choices, women's access to education, women's abilities to develop, it definitely affecting, you're affecting everything. There is a kind that, that and, and uh, I call, there is, a, there is a kind of necropolitics. Israel is controlling life and death. of the housing demolitions. Have we ever looked at the way such demolition is affecting women's lives and women's bodies and women's ability to develop? The attack on the Palestinian home is something that did not start today, but the attack on the Palestinian home that is so open today, when you hit the home, you change the entire social fabric, you change the entire um, uh, relationships inside the family. You change the interaction. You change children's perceptions towards the parents. You change the, the, the relationship between the father and the mother. And definitely you change women's status. Actually, Mehwar Center, you know, played a very uh, big role in, uh, in, ha in giving this chance for the um, abused woman. Uh, because in the beginning they didn't have somebody or a place to to go to and to to be sheltered in. Uh, most of the time we see you know, also their families don't support them because our culture uh, uh, doesn't give the, them the right. You, know, you can go out of your abuse and you can have another life. No, uh, all the time they are oppressed and they are blamed. They are. Uh, consider the ones that make the, the troubles and this is you know the patriarchal uh, uh, culture and society <laughs> no legal system, there is no system of social control. Women are in jeopardy. Vulnerable groups are always in jeopardy. And we're not talking about, you know, you look at domestic violence, you look at uh, vulnerable groups such as elderly, you look at uh, kids that with, uh, with special needs. All those groups, the marginalized groups, are really in jeopardy under conditions that are all militarized and are all violated. The legal situation in Palestine is a very complicated situation uh, because Palestine didn't have a real independence since years. It was all the time occupied by many, by uh, the Ottoman and by the British uh, uh, colonization, and then so the, the laws that the Palestinian now authority has uh, are very. Um, 
weak laws. Palestinians actually didn't write their, um, weren't able to write their own laws. And in the uh, criminal law, it has many, many uh, materials that uh, actually uh, oppress the uh, woman and uh, don't give her her rights and all the time gives the uh, support to the man because actually it was written from men and uh, they didn't consider any time that woman has rights. If you look at the extended family, the extended family used to be a source of support to women in case of violence against her. Today there is no access to the extended family. So if a woman who lives, for example, in, 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 in Betunia cannot reach her parents in Ramallah or in Betunia cannot reach her parents in, in Jerusalem, how is she going to get support and help? So if the, if the state system is not functioning, and the family system is not functioning, and the informal system is not functioning, who could prevent abusers from further abusing women? Nobody. What we're doing is not only we're uh, not helping women, we're encouraging abusers because we're telling them, well, you could do whatever you want. There is no police, there is no court system, there is no family to ask for help, and there is no place to go. So this is, this is the kind of trap that I'm saying. That definitely encourages patriarchal power holders to feel more empowered. You're constantly reminded that you are not. You're a persona non grata. You don't need, you know, they're controlling who should live, who should die, how should we live, and whether at all. We should exist. I know that my daily fights are not really helping, but fight we must.